Good morning, our final day, day 22 of our days through the book of Isaiah. Today, obviously, chapter 64 to 66, and this great vision of the judgment of God upon all sin, the final eradication of all sin and rebellion and God's unwavering judgment of it and all those who practice it, but also the glorious vision of this new heavens and this new earth that God is going to create and the realm of eternal peace and joy that that will be for those who are given the right to enter it. So the the, the reading this morning begins with this uh, this prayer of Isaiah for revival. And I want us to just back up a little bit to the end of chapter 63 because his prayer actually starts in in verse 15 of, of chapter 63 where he, he cries out to God in penitence, in admission of guilt and sinfulness, not only his own, but I think primarily on behalf of the, of the children of Israel, his people. And... Uh, He says to God, look down from heaven and see from your habitation, holy and glorious. Where are your zeal and your strength, the yearning of your heart and your mercies toward me? Are they restrained? Uh, You know, Isaiah is living in a day in which he prophetically is, is seeing the complete disintegration of the faith and religious life of Israel and their national life as they will be conquered by the Babylonians and Jerusalem itself will be destroyed. He has seen all of this. He knows it's coming and his heart is broken as he thinks of what's going to happen to his people. And and he he now starts pulling on the heartstrings of God, so, so to speak. He says, you are our father. Abraham didn't even know about us. Jacob, Israel, didn't even acknowledge us, but surely, God, you know about us. You are our father. You're the one who's formed us. You're our redeemer. And yet you, in some way, have made us stray. You've hardened our hearts as a nation, and we don't serve you anymore. And uh, he then describes what he sees prophetically, how the, the, the adversaries of God's people have trodden down your sanctuary, God. Prophetically, I've seen it. They, they have burnt the temple. They've broken down the walls of Jerusalem. And we have become like those of old over whom you never ruled. It's almost like I can see prophetically, God, that we've almost become a completely apostate nation, though we were the people of God. And, and what is his response to this horrific vision of what's going to happen to God's people? He, he now prays this great prayer for revival. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would tear open the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence. He is now referring back to the day when God initially formed the nation on Mount Sinai. When Moses had led the people out of Egypt, there they were, this band of slaves, and God formed them into a nation when he came down and the mountain shook with fire. And uh, Isaiah is saying that you would do the same again, that you would once again constitute us as a holy nation, as a people called by you, separated by you, that you'd start again, O God. Just start again and, and form us again. We need it, Lord. This prayer for revival. As fire burns brushwood, as fire causes water to boil, that you would come down, that you would make known your name to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things for which we didn't look, you came down, the mountains shook at your presence. For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear Nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. You meet him who rejoices and does righteousness, who remembers you in your ways. You are indeed angry, for we have sinned. In these ways we continue and we need to be saved. What an amazing prayer 
for revival. Isaiah is, is, is imploring God to, to just reset the clock and do what he did again at the beginning because our sins have carried us away. And this is, this is a prayer that we can pray today as we look at the state of the church. We might be tempted to pray the same thing. Lord, we've slipped into so many sinful ways as the church. And God, we desire that you would come again and do as you, you did in the beginning. That you'd, you'd let that, that first love for Jesus and that, that awakening passion for the gospel and for the Bible and for preaching and for worship and for, for fellowship and for being together as Christians and worshiping and, 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 and living holy lives. And that thing that, that you remember perhaps from when you first got saved and maybe you were part of a church that was, was alive in God and, and, and we so long to be part of a church like that again. And so it's a good thing to pray, O oh Lord, that you would tear open the heavens, that you would come down. Okay, now a couple of things to note. As we pray that, we pray for revival. As you read the following chapters, which I urge you to do, you're going to see how God answers Isaiah's cry for revival. And here are a couple of principles. He says to Isaiah, it's not about the revival of Israel. I was found by people and a nation that didn't seek me, says God to Isaiah. And that's quoted in the New Testament as an illustration of how God has actually all through his whole work, through Israel, through the whole of human history, his plan, his vision has always been to save not just one little nation. It's not some parochial scheme. His plan was always to save billions of people, potentially from around the whole planet. This is not about some ethnic people, the Jews. And he, he tells that to Isaiah. He said, listen, those Jews who have turned their back on me, they are going to be punished. I'm not going to overlook any of their sins and they will suffer for all eternity in it. The, their worm that does not die, the fire will not be quenched. Jesus quotes that to talk about hell. He says, even somehow in the new heavens and the new earth, there will be this reminder as, as people go out and they see the graves of those who, who have suffered the second death and who are going to consciously suffer hell for all eternity there will be this reminder so so god is not in in his answer to the prayer for revival god does not overlook sin he's still going to punish it and yet there is this people that is going to get saved not just from the nation of the jews but from every nation around the world and in fact uh, god says this you shall leave your name as a curse to my chosen. In some senses, those who still cling to the old covenant, the, the, the Jews who will not accept the Messiah, their name will be a curse to those whom God has really, truly chosen. Who's that? That's the church. For the Lord God will slay you, those who reject the Messiah, and call his servants by another name. It's not even about Israel, God says to, to Isaiah. It's about a new people that I'm going to form from every nation under heaven. And they are going to be called by a new name. They're going to be called Christians. And it's not about a renewed physical Israel in this old world, says God. But behold, I create a new heavens and a new earth. It's about a whole new creation. And it's not about a, a Jerusalem that's, that's one little city. It's about a, a, a worldwide Jerusalem, a Zion that covers a new heavens and a new earth where a new creation will be and this new people will dwell. That's what it's about. That's how I'm going to answer the question. Uh, as, uh, that's how I'm going to answer the prayer that I should come down and do what I did 
in the beginning. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it in a different way, Isaiah. And it's going to be far more glorious. And so let's just, here are the two things I want you, you to take out of this. We pray, God, would you come down and revive us? But it may be that God will answer the prayer for revival in, in a different time than we are expecting, in, in, in a different way that we're expecting, with a different people that we're expecting. Maybe it'll be people outside of our experience in our little local church. Maybe God will revive those outside the church. Maybe he's going to save people that we find odious and disgusting. Maybe he's going to save them, but leave those in the church who've gone lukewarm and vomit them out of his mouth. Maybe revival won't look like we want it to look. So, yes, God, do all your holy will. Lord. Do it where you will. Do it as you will. Do it with the people that you will. But God, include me. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Amen. Well, I'll see you when we pick up the book of Jeremiah.